we should probably turn the car off. Alright. Hi. Dave's cranky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even fucking care anymore. I really fucking don't. I mean, honestly, the fucking year we've had. And we get this right at the end. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like they saved the fucking best for last. Well, and this rounds out the, uh... This is the, the Tyler Perry the, for the year. Yeah, well, well, this rounds out the Black Holiday hat trick. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I miss Black Nativity. I hear it's awesome. Oh, <laughs> did you do? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. So, this was a Medea movie. And somehow, it makes Medea's Witness Protection look amazing in comparison. In comparison, Medea's Witness Protection was fucking hilarious. This, I don't even know what this was. It was just, when Larry the Cable Guy is the highlight of a movie. He actually wasn't bad in this. No, no, you know, that's the thing, like... That's what he this was, movie is doing. It's making us say, like, you know yeah. what? Larry the Cable Guy was kind of okay. He he, he was good for that role. Um, yeah, he was essentially playing my dad. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't met your dad, but now I want to. Honestly, um, everything about that was pretty much on par a little bit less with like the inappropriate sex jokes. Not a whole lot less, well, but a little that, bit less. That part was my dad, and uh, uh, m m more of a beard like this. Yeah, uh, a little bit longer, but instead of the goatee that he had. But essentially, past that, pretty much spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this movie, and it's. And I think I said it. In the, we reached a point in the theater that there were other people, and we just didn't care. We just started talking. <laughs> they were far enough back. Yeah. No, uh, but uh, I, I, there was that one lady who just was just howling with laughter. I mean, howling with laughter at all the white people jokes. Well, yeah, because <laughs> white people are crazy in Tyler Perry movies. Yes, yeah. but th this movie was essentially meet the parents. Crossed with guess who's coming to dinner? Yeah, and it wasn't well. It wasn't done. No, well. no, no. Uh, see, th this movie is going to make me do something that I didn't want to do. Uh, I know I kind of got up its ass a while back. Um, uh, Grown Ups Two. I. Oh, you an apology. You're, oh my god! <laughs> you're not the worst film I've seen. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say any more. You don't fucking deserve anything better. But, um, no, th this was by far one of the worst things I've ever seen. It was an editing nightmare. It was the most oh. incompetently filmed thing I've ever seen. It was literally like they just set up cameras and every once in a while someone came up and pressed a zoom button. Things this was more poorly directed than the first couple of movies that Brad and I made when we were in high school. Uh, I'm going to move the camera here for a second. See, I'm going to warn oh, you. Oh, you're going to do the zoom? I'm going to warn um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to I'm going to warn you that it's going to happen so that you're not completely fucking jarred by it. But here's essentially how a, f a, a scene in that is. Uh, it's framed, a two-shot, uh, sort of like thus. Um, and one of the characters stands up out of frame, and the camera guy doesn't know what to do, so he goes this way, and then he kind of goes this way, and then he just zooms the fuck in. <laughs> what is that? Who does that? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't she walked away. I don't, nobody told me what to do as she moved. And that's the fucking take they used. Yeah, and, and it, that's it, the it's, fucking take they used. It it zooms in tight. Move that around a little bit. It zooms in tight on Tyler Perry. 
And you assume he's going to be doing... No, he's not doing anything. He's just sitting there staring this way because I don't think he knew they were just going to suddenly slam Zoom in on him like it's fucking Ninja the Mission Force. (laughs) Oh, my God. This movie was so fucking horrible. It was so horrible. But And and, and things just kept happening. Like, the first 15 minutes... uh, It made no sense. It just kept jumping back and forth between things... Like, were- Medea is getting shown around her new job at a department store. And then all of a sudden, uh, Christmas wipe. and with, with bells and a ribbon. Not not like, no, big bells and a ribbon in the middle of the screen that spins and then swipes. Just suddenly That's like, the wipe. Like, mm, like that, constantly throughout the movie. Presents, Christmas trees, wreaths, everything. Um, but then it suddenly it, it switches scenes and we're in what looks like a house, but they tell us it's a school. I, mean, I, I, I believe it's also the, uh, the mayor's office. It's everything. And then like, we're talking about like the school doesn't have enough money to put on the holiday Jubilee. Oh, oh that- but Mr. Mayor, that'll ruin the town. Well, we don't have the budget. Take it from the school. The school ain't got the budget. We've only got four teachers, and they've got multiple classes. <laughs> and then it just dissolves back to the fucking department store where we left off. Like, did, did that just happen, or was that a meanwhile type thing? Are these events happening concurrently? Is it the same building? It was hard to fucking tell. Well, and it was also impossible, too, because uh, as we find out, the, the schoolhouse stuff... Which, seriously, school, house, it's a house. It was yeah. a fucking house, it's a house that had desks in it. They're, they're, uh, they're, 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 they did put a water fountain in one of the hallways. Yeah. Just, you know, for for, for dressing. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh, all that takes place in some farm town in Alabama. It looks like fucking West Virginia, but whatever and everyone there has a completely different accent from not from alabama from each other every white person you see in this movie has a very separate and distinct southern accent it's just be southern (laughs) yeah like the the mayor it wasn't even trying to do an accent no uh the 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 evil guy Chad Michael Murray, he was like fucking Kentucky Hills like yeah Southern accent. One of the kids was I swear to Christ she was trying a British accent. It was just it was fucking all over the place. Nah, it, it's it. It's like they like literally the casting call said, "Can you do a southern voice?" Well, I got this one, perfect. Well, I do this one here, perfect as well. Yeah, yeah. I've been working on this one. It's nice. For me, what it seemed like good as well was Tyler Perry decided to take it. Make an exercise out of writing a movie about a n- number of subjects that he knew fucking nothing about. Like white people. And agriculture. I'm working on a new corn that doesn't need water. Okay. Or the scene between two farmers. Brown be one, I'll be the other. You can't grow corn, I grow corn. But I... This new corn. I grow corn. If you grow corn, we're gonna have a problem. Okay. Scene. A yeah. lot of farmers grow corn. We're surrounded by fucking cornfields right now. There's there's corn. I can actually see. Like- yeah, th- there's fucking <laughs> corn outside this car. AMC, if you don't stop growing corn. Yeah. 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 Um. I, I don't the think C the stands for. I don't think the, the <laughs> American movie corn exactly. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, I, d- I don't think the farmers anywhere fight over what. D- does he think that honestly that like 
one guy grows corn, the other guy grows soybeans, the next dude grows carrots. But they, there, there's no mixing and matching. Like, in two guys in one area can't grow corn. I mean, that's just how rude. It's preposterous. Yeah. It really grows all kinds of shit, really. I mean, it doesn't even matter. Like, yeah. It's like he also grows uh, poinsettias for Christmas. Christmas. And it's hilarious because he pronounces it wrong each and every time. Yeah. Got some of them point sitters, point shitters, point siders. Yeah. And everyone corrects him. It's like, fuck you. You think I'm stupid? I don't know how to say it. But, oh, uh, also how business and laws don't. Yeah, he he's a fucking idiot. He's uh, Tyler Perry is just a fucking dumb, ignorant motherfucker. And the reason... He keeps making movies, I think, is so I'll have a goddamn brain aneurysm. I think the motherfucker's got it out for me at this point. It has been such a shitty year. God. Way to end it on a high note. <laughs> end it. We're not fucking done. We got more to talk about. Well, I know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, essentially the plot uh, of the movie is that... Uh, the school and the town are supposed to be putting on this holiday event. The Jubilee, and which apparently somehow helps the farmers. The, the town has this party and the fucking... It helps everyone in yeah. that city. Yeah, so apparently the farmers sell all of their fucking crops. I don't know. <laughs> at Christmas, at the Jubilee. Doesn't fucking work that way. Planting corn in December. I don't think they yeah. really took a lot of time to think about it. Yeah, yeah grounds rock hard. Yeah, this is probably a good time. We'll all start to death if we don't have this party that it apparently cost the town $100,000. Yeah, so uh, they need X amount of dollars. We don't actually know. X amount of dollars or uh, the town is ruined. Uh, and apparently uh, it's been hard since they built the dam up the river. Also, yes, there's this weird subplot. Uh, That's mentioned briefly throughout. Where apparently at some point there was a dam built up the river. Also, apparently there's a river that's in this town. We never see it. <clears throat> but apparently they put a dam in there and it cut off the river and is now killing this town. So everyone got laid off and is now farmers is how I gathered it. Or they were farmers <laughs> and now they can't grow crops because they can't get enough water. Which, you know... Um, it's really murky. Yeah, I, I, we live in the Midwest here. and uh, This is true. Um, there are large stretches of land in the Midwest that don't really have rivers. rivers. There's some creeks, there's some ponds... I mean, there's groundwater, there's rain, but you're not dependent solely on a river to run a fucking farm. No. I mean, and, and we, we've got that, the Mississippi that kind of makes the one side of us, and I know there's an Illinois River. I don't know where it's at, though. Hmm. And yeah, well, we're closest to Look the... Look at a fucking map. We're closest to the Sangamon River, but that's yeah. beside the point. But yeah, it's beside the. It doesn't matter. We, the I fact that I didn't that the, even the, remember that there's a Sangamon yeah, River. Yeah, the the fact that this river. We're in Sangamon County, by it, the way. It, Springfield. We're at I, the AMC. I figured. No, I figured I would mention that because it's like it's like yeah. Why wouldn't he know there's a Sangamon River? Yes. Anyway. <laughs> fucking Christ so yeah the river I'm just I've been trying to figure out the logic of this because I've been trying to figure out Tyler Perry's logic like does he think that's how farming is done from rivers and don't get me wrong I'm sure river water is helped irrigation so on and so forth river runs through it I yeah, don't know yeah but at the same time like when a dam's built I'm, I'm sure like there's got to be government regulations, compensation made, things like that. No, no, no. They they apparently just like they did the, this just, evil company just built a dam, put a big like stopper yeah. in the river, and now there's no water. Because it's I, uh, I don't know. It, it it would make sense if it was a movie set in like 1910. Then I'd fucking buy it. You know, one of the first talkies or something. <laughs> the town was going well until they put that railroad up the way. <laughs> oh, 
But anyway, continue with the plot. The ra- <laughs> so the railroad. <laughs> yeah, the railroad. Um, no, so uh, so they need all this money, and uh, the there's uh, one of the teachers there uh, who just so happens to be related to Medea. Uh, a uh, young black gal, uh, which she did fine in the movie. I, I thought she did. She was she fine. fine. <laughs> I mean, it was in a movie like this. It's really hard to gauge anybody, but she did fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. She is teacher of the year, uh, and uh, the best person on earth, according to the movie. And she's like, "Well, hey, I just incidentally happened to know a guy who does vague PR stuff." To some degree. Uh, it's never really covered. What the fuck this guy's job even he is? He represents a company <clears throat> that represents a company. He I represents think. people. Yeah. To some degree. And he tells her, like, well, you know, I just happen to have this one company in mind. They just called me just now, and they're in trouble. And they could use some really good PR exactly where you are, which is nowhere near where he's at. He's in, like, fuck, he lives in, like, Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, but it just so happens he represents someone who is in desperate need of a good PR win in that small town. Oh, and also happens to when? be her high school boyfriend. Yes. Uh, that's, like, a fifth-level down plot that goes absolutely yeah. nowhere. Yeah. It's like they used to know each other. Okay, what else? That's it. And it's like there was a <laughs> string and Tyler Perry knew it wasn't going anywhere, so he just snipped it. Yeah. Like, but I, didn't decide to, like, I guess edit you, the script at all. He just, nah, fuck it, it's done. They, they don't care. They can't do shit with that. Man. Yeah. Uh, so he tells her, like, well, it'll be kind of tricky. No, it won't. But I can get a contract drafted tomorrow and be there. Also, they'll give me the money in advance to give you guys. How does a $100,000 sound? Yeah. That'll save the Jubilee. And the school. And the whole town. And everything else. Like, how fucking poor is this town? Yeah, um... But, it, but like it, at the school too, like the principal's like, "Oh my god, with all of that money, we could even buy a new computer." How much does she think a computer costs? I don't know. Especially for a school, you usually get like a pretty good solid discount from like Apple or somebody. Like they they hook schools up pretty fat to a degree. I, I just got a I just got my paycheck today. I could literally go to a store right now and probably buy three new computers and still have money. Can I borrow some money, by the way? <laughs> no! I just spent it on fucking computers! Are you going to give them to a school? No! They can buy their own with their government subsidies that they have to fucking buy computers with. Yeah, that, okay, so that's the other thing. What I, I I got the impression I a computer <laughs> an e machine costs like a hundred dollars. How fucking backwards does he think shit runs in the South? Like shit's some pretty backwards sometimes, but for the fuck's sake, I mean that that uh, education is usually run by the fucking state to a degree, and this this school building nope mayor's office in the school. <laughs> yeah, okay, so the school's in the same building as the mayor's office, or the mayor's office is in the school, or I think the school's vari- in his house. Okay, so it's one variation of another, but but it's obviously a it's not a private school; it's a public school. I don't even know that technically it's a school. I think it's just like. A ring of homeschool children. I think it's I think it's a public school. I think this is Tyler Perry's idea of what a public school in the South is. Assuming uh, you live in a town that is ninety nine percent adults and fifteen kids. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's what the school is. There's a piece of set decoration in this movie. In the schoolroom. In the classroom. Not a Christmas tree. Nope. It's a Christmas cross. Yep. It's a big wood cross. In the big middle as of shit. The, big as life. Like, tall as me. Like, this fucker's like six foot tall. 
and it's wrapped with Christmas lights, and that's the decoration in the public school. Just like the Bible intended. <laughs> that's what the Founding Fathers wrote in the Constitution. Well, you could, you could almost say it's probably big enough to crucify a 12-year-old girl on, because they did that shit. Yeah, Teach yeah. that little bitch to touch Medea's purse. <laughs> She's a boy. She had it coming. This movie keeps trying to throw an anti-bullying message in there, but it is so goddamn backwards about it. It yeah. keeps bringing it up, but it mentions like, oh, a good way to stop bullying. Is Punch them in the face. Is to beat the shit out of them after they've been in a terrible car accident. That happens. And their car just exploded. Um, Guy obviously is in really bad shape. The car flipped over and exploded... And then uh, punch him in the face. Right on the giant, this side of his face sized bruise he has from slamming into Lord knows what. Uh, it, it also has the anti bullying message of uh, this one little girl. Uh, like, uh, it, it's during this, the, the classroom setting, and, and there's this little boy that we're led to believe is like the best little gem of a student ever. <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, then there's uh, the girl that sits next to him, and the teacher's asking a question. And the girl's like, ooh, 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 me, 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 me. And the little boy's just sitting there like, no, I don't care. <clears throat> and the teacher keeps, at, keeps asking, like, well, you, the little boy there, who obviously doesn't give a shit, you know the answer, right? Right? Tell us the answer, because you know the answer, right? Right? Tell us the answer. The girl's like, he doesn't know. He's poor and dirty. Not poor. He's a farm boy. <laughs> He's a farm boy. He's always dirty. So Don't what I want to know is, to me. if this is a farming community, how the fuck is she not live on a farm? Yeah, I'm like, you're a farm girl. The fuck you live? It's like, I live in town. Oh, bullshit. <laughs> you're the one kid that lives in town. <laughs> I live in the school. <laughs> Which <laughs> could technically be true. Uh, fuck. But, uh, yeah, it's... It, 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 so she's kind of picking on him in this vague, mostly just calling it as it is way. And the teacher says, hey, that's not nice to bully kids. Plus, how many fucking answers did you get wrong on the last test? Yeah? You still want to talk? He has straight A's on the last three assignments. Did you? No. So don't bully him. Like... What? Are you picking on a 12-year-old, the teacher lady? You're not good at this. It's like, oh, you're going to point out his flaws? Well, I'll turn it back on you, because I'm Betty. So back to the plot. We got sidetracked. So did it! Yeah, it did. We're just kind of explaining shit as it happened. But, uh, okay, there's a town, town's poor, money comes... A uh, young lady lives there. Turns out she moved there and bought a farm with the man who's obviously her boyfriend, who turns out to be her husband. It's not really a twist or anything. Not that it would fucking matter, because none of you fuckers got to see this shit. Um, <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> none of you are going to watch this. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, she's talking to her mom, who was the lady showing Medea around her new job, and tells her mom that she doesn't think she's coming home for Christmas. The end. Nope. No. <coughs> That's the catalyst. <laughs> oh, no, no. There's something wrong with my baby. Hour, yeah. There's something wrong with my baby. Those white people are getting her. Listen. I heard a white boy in the background. Something wrong. We need to go there. <coughs> Why is a white man answering the phone in her house? This is... Uh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Yeah. Just a lot of mmming. Yes. It things. So, so she eventually gets Medea to go down there with her. For Christmas. She arrives. Unexpected and uh, uninvited. To this house. Where this man and woman are obviously a couple. Apparently the girl has not told her mother that uh, her uh, significant other exists. And other than white. as a farmhand. <laughs> and is white. Which apparently race is an issue. Um, 
She's horribly racist. Oh my god, you guys think Irving is racist? No. No. Like, I say some horrible shit into this camera. That is true. I've been there. I'm not a racist. That is true. He's just very, this, he's just very reactionary. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's, I'm not a bad person. I'm just an asshole. I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> um, this movie is honestly one of the most racist things I've ever seen. Because <laughs> it makes everybody look bad. The clan's in it. The clan's in it. The clan's a joke in it. The clan is a sight gag in this fucking movie. They just Twice. randomly they randomly pull over into a town and uh uh Medea gets out and is like, I'm gonna ask this guy who's sitting here whittling whittling I don't even fucking know. Uh I'm gonna ask this guy who's whittling if there is a bathroom nearby, because I need to go to the bathroom. Uh and the guy says, oh, yes, ma'am, right over there, and points to a building across the street. And it's just a, a just generic-looking door, and it, it there's a sign above it for, like, general store or something like that. So he's like, okay, walks across the street and opens the door. Turns out it's the clan. That's it. The, she opens the door, and it's just a room stuffed full of people wearing clansmen outfits. Standing up at the front <clears throat> is, like, one guy in between, like, the American flag and, like, the, like, Confederate, like, stars and bars. And then she's like, oh, I, I, oh, and just closes the door and walks away. She doesn't even close it. She just runs. She just runs away, and all the clansmen do. All they do is just go. It's like oh. one guy that le leans out the door like, what was that? That was weird. <laughs> doesn't say anything. just, oh. That's it. They get back in their car and leave. Yeah, so they eventually get there, and uh, the mother starts treating uh, uh, the husband, the farmhand, like uh, complete shit. She really treats him like... She's a like, bitch. Like garbage. She is a cold-hearted bitch. Yeah. Refuses to learn his name. Well, you know, shit like that. <coughs> and, uh, well, it, it, you know, turns out his parents were coming for Christmas. Wacky coincidence, we know. <laughs> Which is uh, Larry the Cable Guy and some annoying broad. Um, I don't know who the fuck she was. So they get there and they convince his parents to pretend like... <clears throat> who know about the marriage. They're completely okay with it. No qualms whatsoever. They actually are a really nice family. Yeah. like I mean, they're, they're, they're redneck as shit, but... They're well, like good values. Yeah, they're honestly a yeah. really nice family. They're like it's like, oh, our son married a black girl. No, that's not what this is. They're like, oh, our son married a very pretty woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, like good values. Honestly, like say some very like in a very redneck manner, say some very intelligent, thoughtful things. Or is it thoughtful and intelligent as you get in this fucking movie? It, it, you know, they could have fucking farted twice and it would have been fucking profound or whatever the fuck was coming out of Tyler Perry's mouth. Um, and wackiness ensues. She thinks they're the farmhand's family. She's trying to run her daughter's household. Keeps saying, what are you people doing in my daughter's house? It's Christmas. Cuts down a memorial tree. Which they were making a really big deal out of that, but honestly, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. Yellow ribbon on a tree. Yeah, I wouldn't have cut it down. Um, I would have thought, I would have wow, asked, that's weird that there's a gigantic yellow bow on this tree. Maybe I should ask before I cut down a tree that's in someone's yard and drag it in their fucking yeah, house. Maybe I would ask my daughter before I go outside and cut down a tree as a 65-year-old black woman in Alabama. Like, that wasn't the thought. Like, maybe I should get the farmhand to help me with this. Oh, farmhand, cut down this tree and bring it inside. Which is basically how everything else in the movie was going to that point. Yeah. Just, no, she decided, like, I'm going to make a stand on this thing and do all of this shit myself. Yeah. Also, there was a really, uh, there was an odd moment 
during the scene while while she was out there doing that and they were all inside talking, uh, I, I wasn't sure if you noticed. Uh, you probably did, but it, it was just so peculiar. They're inside and they keep asking, like, say, hey, where's Eileen? We ain't non none of us seen her in a bit. It's like, oh, last I saw, she was standing outside out and back. Uh, and at a point, Larry the Cable Guy asks the son, it's like, hey, go on in the kitchen and get me a beer. And the kid's like, okay. And he leaves. And then you hear the sound of, like, a glass breaking or, like, a plate smashing or something like that. I think like that was that. supposed to be the sound of the tree falling. It sounded like someone dropped a cup. Like, I thought he went in there, like, and dropped something, like, dropped a bottle or something like that. And then he comes walking back in, looking all shaken up, like, here, here's your beer. You need to drink it. Just, just go ahead and drink it. Well, and it's in a can. And then he just sits there looking nervous. But then... When she actually comes in hauling this tree, he is just as surprised as everyone else. Yeah, I think it was a poorly written scene where the intention was that the kid was trying to get his dad to shut the fuck up. I, I, I don't know. But at the same time, this movie was such a poorly written mess that I can't guarantee that. Well, and there were plenty of things that were sloppy. It was like, I, I think they kept thinking that it was a stage play still. Because there was one scene, uh, Letty uh, noticed it uh, before I did. Was the after after the truth is outed, and uh, the mom finds out that that oh Lord Jesus, my baby done married the white devil. She decides to just sit outside in the middle of fucking winter uh, until she I don't know dies. I don't know what her plan was really after sit outside uh but the uh the guys folks try being nice and it's like oh we're gonna take her out this big mug of piping hot cocoa and okay there, there's like there's no steam rising off of it but she keeps going on about how hot it is and barely touching the cup uh, like okay well there's no steam o okay well whatever i'm not gonna fault them on everything but then they keep moving it around and you kind of notice that there's nothing in this cup it is completely empty and, and but she just keeps carrying it around and just keeps mentioning how piping hot it is i was too focused <laughs> on how many times they kept saying there ain't no cabs there ain't no cabs there ain't no cabs there ain't no cabs there ain't no cabs, there ain't no cabs. You, you're gonna sit out here forever there ain't no cabs no freeze to death there ain't no yeah, cabs yeah no cabs you might as well come on inside there ain't no cabs There was a 10 minute scene, and it was pretty much that verbatim. Over and over again. You crazy, you didn't bring your ass inside. There ain't no cabs out here. Well, sit your ass out here and freeze. Sit your ass out here and freeze. And freeze your ass off. Sit your ass out and freeze. There ain't no cabs. Ain't no cabs. <laughs> ain't no cabs. Free your ass. Sit your ass. Freeze your ass. You, you two, come on back inside. Let her sit out here. She grown. There ain't no cabs. She'll freeze to death. Well, she's got a point. There's no cabs. There ain't gonna be no cabs. <laughs> Let's go inside. No. There's a there's a good moment where um, where Larry the cable guy's wife uh, is mentioning like my husband here right he's such a kidder oh really amateur comedian this guy uh, thinks he's Jeff Foxworthy <laughs> no no you know what yeah no nah, nah, I can't even funny as that guy <laughs> who could be. I could accept that as a poorly done inside joke that, you know, like, hey, let's mention our friend, give him a little, you know. The Prilosec OTC joke, though. That might as, he might as well have fucking looked at the fucking camera and winked. Wink. Royalty check. <laughs> yeah, they're discussing how, uh, uh, what's her name? See, that that's the other bitch part about movies, this fucking bad. You don't remember anybody's name, so it's hard to fucking talk about. Uh, Cunty Mc... Mom face. They're talking about how she apparently had a fucking heart attack at some point. And it wasn't a heart attack, it was you know, right, Lily. I think I broke her. Lady's a fan of Cunty McMom face. Um <laughs> But Who wouldn't be? But she didn't have a heart attack, she had gas and heartburn at the same time. 
because, you know, it's the same symptoms. Well, you know, if you had that heartburn, what she should have taken was some Prilosec OTC. It works on heartburn almost immediately. That was the line. Shameless fucking plug. And it was, it, it really seemed like when he said that, all background music stopped. The camera didn't move. It was a. It was just and, a. And, it was a the, one shot. And the volume of his voice got louder, like he was yelling it to the fucking rafters. Need some of that Prilosec OTC. Fun fact: that stands for over the counter. Um. So, yeah, cut to the end. Uh, Conti McMahon face has to accept that her daughter is married to a white woman. Um, <laughs> she married a white woman, too? <laughs> a white man. You might as well have been a fucking woman. You're such a fucking pansy ass. Um, no, no, no. He stomped a mud hole in that dude's ass and walked it dry. Uh, yeah, oh, oh. And uh, he punches his childhood bully in the face, who happens to be the man who got his wife fired from her job. She got her job back. And so, at the end, everybody's making up and apologizing. A uh, fucking bad guy shows up with his wife, who I recognize from something, and I couldn't fucking place it. Oh, uh, it's Alicia Witt. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's Alicia Witt. Never, okay. So, Alicia Witt, trying her hardest, thinking it was a drama. Vit, uh, technically. No. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, Which is it's weird. She's in several scenes uh, that take place over several days in this movie. Same clothes. She's wearing the same outfit in every scene she is in. Yeah, yeah. Almost as if they probably filmed all of her stuff in one day. So yeah, they're making up as a family, and so uh, the daughter, uh, our uh, protagonist, probably besides Medea, comes up with this brilliant plan to solve. We 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 should mention uh, real quick. Uh, she had just been fired uh, because the childhood bully. Oh yes. Uh, it caused some shit. See, apparently the contract that the mayor uh, so hastily signed with this sponsor, this unnamed sponsor, who was giving them all this money. Uh, apparently they had a bunch of writers in the contract like, yes, we will help you have your, your, your holiday jubilee, but don't fucking say Christmas. Oh, and don't you mention can, Jesus. You can have your, yeah, you can have all your holiday fun. No nativity! No baby Jesus! And the town was all a flutter about it. It's like, I am a Christian and I will have my Jesus and my Christmas. I love the face you're making when you're saying that. You look like a Muppet. It's amazing. And they're just going ape shit about it. Yeah. And uh, they try calling the guy up, uh, her friend who, who helped get this deal. And he's basically like, look, you signed the contract. Hey, Mr. Maya, how about all that money? It's like, well, I already spent it. Well, there you fucking go. Yeah. You signed a legal binding contract without reading it. You know what? Not my fucking problem. Yeah. Honestly, I think that 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 poor dude, the uh, the the high school boyfriend of uh, the daughter, he got really shit on in this yeah, movie. Yeah, he was all right. He was trying to do something nice. He was trying to help out. He yeah. didn't know that they wouldn't just completely not read the contract. Yeah. They could have said no. You know. But it, they could have negotiated. Like it's like, well, we like what you're doing here, but we happen to notice that you crossed off all these things that we would like to have. Could we maybe negotiate on that deal? Like, can we keep Christmas and you can keep like twenty thousand dollars of this exorbitant f amount of money that we obviously don't need all of? Um, but they don't. They don't do that for the for the tiny ass stage that they put up. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, and, but then uh, the high school bully shows up at the, the mayor's office town hall meeting that's at the school uh, and he's like, hey, Mr. Mayor, do you know about this bullshit? Like, yeah, we were just talking about it. No, no, the other bullshit. The, the sponsors, they're the motherfuckers that built that dam. They fucked us. So here's what you're going to do, Mr. Mayor. Fire her. Fire the teacher. She did all this. She's not one of us. Yeah, okay, so... Fire the teacher. 
So she the, didn't sign the fucking contract. She did not draft the contract. She did not write the contract. She didn't she even doesn't work. She didn't even fucking hold the contract. She doesn't work for the company that did the contract. She, she doesn't work for the company that is sponsoring the town at this point. She has no involvement other than Oh man, the town's fucked. Let me call a friend of mine and see if he can work out a deal with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, and then the mayor just turns like, well, I'm sorry, you're shit canned. It's like, can the mayor just go around and just fire people? For no reason. Well, I mean, yeah, for no real legal valid reason. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Like, this is the dumbest mayor in the world. This entire if, movie, he's if just... If only there were a to... teacher's union. Hmm. If fucking only. You know, something to protect teachers from just arbitrarily being fired. <laughs> for, for things that are beyond their control, that they didn't do as a city employee, they did as a concerned citizen. Hmm. Yeah. Man, if only we knew who read the contract, Mr. Mayor... Or who signed it? Mr. Mayor. Mayor. <laughs> so, uh, so apparently Tyler Perry also does not know how local governments work. <clears throat> which, to be honest, I probably don't know fully either. Or even close to. But, we but I know better than, than fucking that shit. The, and I if thought, I was writing a screenplay... I thought we were going to say the same thing, that's why... It... No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next time we got this shit. <laughs> we don't have this at all. No, we don't. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look at the fuck up. If you're not even going to do actual research, Wikipedia, man, I mean, something. Just something well, really and and that harkens to my entire he has an entire legal team does yeah. he couldn't well, have talked to them like it's like say how do contracts work the motherfucker's probably signed quite a few of them himself he's like contracts i don't read that shit whatever no and that's <laughs> that's the thing about tyler perry in general i know we haven't even really finished describing this movie yet and we've been talking about it for fucking ever but um it just seems to me that he has so little respect for his audience that it's it it's just yeah. he, he, he it's like he's going out of his way to insult every single person that goes to see one of his movies. He has so little respect and belief in the in their intellectual abilities that this is like arbitrary pointless reasons and yes arbitrary pointless reasons have been used as a device in literature and film since the fucking beginning and that's fine but not a whole movie built on a series of them yeah that, that is obviously pandering to a specific race and honestly a, a specific income level it, it's it's pretty fucking horrific if you think about it well i mean it's 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 like you know, I know that we've mentioned it before, but, uh, <clears throat> like, Spike Lee is very anti-Tyler Perry. Like, he's gone on the record before saying that his movies are nothing but coonery and buffoonery. <laughs> like, he, he can, he sees it for what it is like. Like, like, motherfucker, you are taking us steps backwards. Oh, and... Yeah, I personally think Spike Lee's a bit of an asshole. Well, but that's just is. me, you know? And he is, but you know what? I mean, it doesn't mean he's wrong. It just means he's a dick about it sometimes. But, but, but the other thing about Spike Lee is, you know, even if he's an asshole, he doesn't, under, he, he doesn't think that lowly of his audience ever. Like, Well, I didn't hear very good things about old boy. <laughs> yeah, well, but at the same time, like, even look at what he did with Bamboozled, which... Handled poorly, and still, as it is, kind of an uncomfortable movie, but he made it have a point. <laughs> well, this movie had all kinds of points. They were just all wrong, in my <laughs> opinion. They are all very rounded off. But so anyway, you, you were building up to the grand finale... Ah, yes. So, uh, 
the daughter, the teacher. Everybody's at the the jubilee. Everyone's at the jubilee. All fucking fifteen people, and they're 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 approaching the fucking stage where these two fucking hillbillies that look like the guys from the Geico commercials are playing music, and all the kids are just standing there wearing pieces of felt cut out to look like the fucking thing you put around the bottom of your Christmas tree that makes them all look like horrible hunchback children. It's a tree skirt. Yeah, tree skirt, whatever. Um, sure. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um. <laughs> They're walking up, and there's news vans there, and the news vans are interviewing random people. And Man, so, there are a lot of news vans here, yeah. remarked one concerned citizen. Yeah, there are a lot of news vans <laughs> here. And, that, and that's where we get, it's cameo time, as they walk up the... Uh, Red carpet leading up to the stage. Yeah, and, and, and you know, just every three feet someone's being interviewed by a different news team. Tell them who was being interviewed, Brian. And they walk past none other than Sweet Goddamn Brown. You know, the Oh Lord Jesus is a far woman. Talking about Jesus and how she came down there to put a fire in thy spirit. And then the next interview is. And then they walk past, although I noticed in the credits, uh, Sweet Brown is credited as herself. This next guy is credited as YouTube guy. And it's none other than Anton Dodson. Yeah. Mentioning how you better hide your kids and hide your wife and hide your husband too because they taking Christ out of Christmas up in here. Yeah. Or some ungodly fucking mishmash where they tried to work in his catchphrase. So so those are our timely cameos. <laughs> Seriously. And so everybody's standing around. They couldn't get in the fucking Montgomery flea market guy? Y you know, honestly, with the way this movie was made, I was waiting for, like, a fucking neighborhood watch, like, fucking side story to go along with everything else, too. True. Mm. Let's throw let's throw some Trayvon Martin in there because you know it. It, it was everything but. It, it really fucking was. It but was they get they but. get they get up there, and this is her genius plan. She charges the microphone and she mentions, "Hold on, everybody, I got a plan." Yeah. Oh yeah. And so this is what she does in front of all these new... Because this won't fail and will have no repercussions. No negative consequences in this world. No, none whatsoever. Her genius plan is she takes the stage. And this is supposed to be heartwarming, by the way, but the entire time you're just sitting there in shock and horror because this is the stupidest fucking thing you can do. She stands up there in front of all these cameras and the guys from the company that built the dam are standing there with the mayor... And she thanks everybody for coming to the Jubilee. To the Christmas Jubilee. Yes. And that they're so glad to be sponsored by a company that really wants to keep the Christ in Christmas. Yes. And then proceeds to thank the uh, the, the company for their uh, now yearly donation... Of or monthly donation of water that they're going to release from the dam, and to help out the town, a hundred thousand gallons of water per month to help the town. The, yes. Woo! Say all the farmers. And the hundred thousand dollars a year they're going to give the school with fifteen students, now making it the best funded public school in the fucking world. Per, per yeah, per student, this place is going to be doing fantastic. Uh, they'll have more computers than Brian, <laughs> <laughs> and I bought them all. <laughs> I'm fucking bringing it home, man. I'm bringing it home. I like that. You yeah, brought it back. Yeah, yeah. I've been working to at all the computers. I've been buying. <laughs> Um, I get a lot of emails from Dell. If you ever buy a computer from them, they will send you an email every day. So and and so she goes up there and talks about all these great things this company is going to do for them that they have in no way said they were going to do. Like have her getting up there in no front of no contractual obligation to fulfill. 
And, and in fact, she's misrepresenting a company with at least enough money to build a dam and give them $100,000 in the first place. So chances are this company's got some money and some lawyers. So she gets up there on stage in front of cameras and just lies about this company. Bold face lies. Yeah. And expects that everything's going to be okay. And of course, since it's a Tyler Perry movie, everything's okay. So she said it in front of the cameras. Now they have to do it. That's how life works. Yes, they have to do it because I said it in front of a TV camera. No, now what they do is sue you. The next day, she will be fucking hounded by lawyers. Yeah. That guy will be on the goddamn nightly news like it's like well, what about what about last night this this woman saying it's like it's like uh she has nothing to do with our company. I mean yeah. it, it what she was saying was nice, but that's not going to happen. We 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 can't fulfill that obligation. That's nothing we've agreed to. That's nothing we ever talked about doing. It's not going to happen and now we're going to sue her for fucking lying like a bitch. Yeah. And that's the end of the movie. That is literally the well. Well, then, then there's the weirdest Christmas song ever. Yeah. Okay. So the little kid that's being bullied in the class, whose father is also uh, the fucking asshole that gets uh, her fired. The um, whatever the fuck his name is. Chad Michael Murray. Chad Michael Murray. Okay. He played Tanner, the school bully, from like the seventies, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but his kid was the one being bullied. Who is gets straight A's is apparently has a wonderful singing voice. So an angel. So suddenly, little country boy, just magical change of mood. Looks like um, and I hate to generalize here, the gayest little boy who ever lived. There's just you just see that fucking Disney sparkle. <laughs> That's my gay son. I'm proud of my gay son. He's suddenly very proud of his gay son. And this kid starts singing this song. It's a Christmas song, apparently. And apparently everyone in the audience fucking knows it. But my 30 years, I've never fucking heard it before. And uh, it's, it's all about Mary, me. did you know? And did you know that you're giving birth to the, the son of God? And Mary, did you know that when you kiss your baby's face, you kiss the face of God? That's a scary fucking thing to think about. That's the that's the sort of shit that somebody says when they're on, like, day three of a coke bend. Yeah. So, that is really, all in all, it's... It's like, I felt like I kissed the face of God last night. <laughs> the messages in, in this movie are, uh, Christmas! Family! Don't lie! Don't trust white people. Don't trust white people. But white maybe people okay. are okay. It's, um, you can you'll you'll learn to trust yeah. white people. Uh, and then there's lying. To be fair, I don't trust most white people either. So <laughs> lying is bad. I can't fault her. Lying in public fixes everything. Yes. Don't bully anybody. And if and if they do bully you, bully them back, but worse. Uh, and the number one thing to you know, don't forget about Jesus. Because he's going to fucking cram him into everything somehow. Yeah. I fucking hate the movies now. I used to like coming out here, you know. Yeah, it was really fun when, like, you and I were the two guys that didn't really have a shtick. Yeah. We just got to go to the movies we and just enjoy went, them. Yeah, we went to, like, weird ones. They're like, yeah. it's like... Man, like last year, like I basically had to pick like about every movie I went to. Yeah. Like I had a pretty good like. It's like I had to see a couple bad ones, but they were ones that like I chose to watch. No, no, you know, I I understand that I'm Brad's roommate, so now it's you know, hey man, I can't get anybody to go to see this. Would would you go see it? Yeah, and that's fine and stuff. And but you know, yeah, last year it was, yeah, I'm not going this week. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go see that shit. But no, now it's just. We're always fucking here. We're always here. When did... Yeah. Ah, fuck. Fuck. I don't know. Any last thoughts about this movie? Cause I'm kind of tired of talking. I really want a cigarette. I hate Christmas. Letty hates Christmas. Honestly, I like Christmas. I just don't like black Christmas. I'm sorry, because if the last three movies that I've seen are what Black Christmas is, it's fucking horrible. It's fucking horrible. Everyone acts like a fucking idiot. 
Cancer and Jesus. That's that's <laughs> Black Christmas. Cancer, Jesus, lion in the south. I I just. I'm, 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 you know, I, 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 I'm sure Black Christmas is fantastic. I, I don't know. I haven't actually experienced it myself. I'm sure it's great. But the way these movies make um, Christmas seem for African Americans in this country is just fucking horrendous. Horrendous. I'm feeling a lot of white guilt lately, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just saying these horrible things to fucking balance it out. You should be feeling white guilt a lot there, Slaver Brian. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't even bring that shit up. I watched 12 Years a Slave, man. <laughs> that shit was rough. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I... I just don't even know what the fuck to say about this movie at the end of it. I mean, this honestly, it, of all the horrible shit we've seen this year, this is at least in the top three. Yeah. Because it's not as, I mean, you know, it's not the same reaction we gave to like Temptation at the beginning of the year, but it's hard to get really honestly like worked up about it anymore because I'm just starting to get numb. Um, but this is honestly one of the worst movies of the year. Yeah, yeah, with, without Easily. a fucking doubt. I mean, writing wise, acting wise, just everything about this movie is just bad. Just like I said, so many inept things. Alicia Vit is in like five different scenes over the course of maybe four days, five days, and she wears the same clothes in every single frame of film she's in. Yeah. No, at the end, she was wearing a coat. Over the same fucking clothes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's... Did she... Was there no wardrobe on set? Was there not no, a fucking... No, that's how he fucking makes money, man. Was, was there not a store? Couldn't they have said, like, Oh, hey, Alicia, yeah. Are you coming to the set tomorrow? Yeah. Could you bring maybe three or four shirts with you? Why? Because we don't have fucking wardrobe, and it'll look like all of your scenes were filmed in one afternoon. Larry the fucking cable guy was the highlight of this film. I know. He was the. I found him charming. He was That's how the, sad my life is. He was the I found best Larry acted. the cable guy fucking charming. You know what I think the trick is? Sleeves. You know, he was wearing sleeves throughout the entire movie. He's Except for his one shirtless scene, which was a little disturbing. He's immediately less terrible if you just put fucking sleeves on him. Yeah. Uh, well, and, uh, that's and what I have to this, gather from this. I don't know. Well, and the other thing about what he was doing in this movie is, yes, he was still a southern fucking white guy. Redneck. But he wasn't an idiot, too. He wasn't being Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. You know? I, I, honestly, yeah, I have to say this is probably the first thing I've seen him in where he wasn't... Well, I mean, it, it, with the exception of, like, some of that footage of him on YouTube where he's... Before he started doing that shtick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think this is the first thing I've ever seen Larry the Cable again where he's not Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. He didn't say, get her done once. Surprisingly... I know. He fixed he fitted fucking Prilosex somehow. That had to be in the contract. He did every yeah, he did everything but like ding <laughs> Should he use some of this? A little twinkle on his teeth. <laughs> Alright, final words. Like sum it up. Uh The Clan? Hmm. I'm gonna go with Cunty McMomface. That's how I'm finishing this. We're not even gonna talk about the fucking trailers either, because there's no fucking point. Every one of them is a Kevin Hart film. We got every Kevin Hart movie coming out in the next, like, ten years, I swear to you. I will say, though, I will, I will, I will ruin what you just said. They showed a trailer for Haunted House 2. Oh, yeah. We didn't know that was coming out. 
Oh, I knew it was coming out. I didn't. I'm still not sure. It looks like it's filmed like just a regular movie, which I guess is still in keeping with the theme they're going with, <coughs> because that essentially makes this equal to uh, uh, The Last Exorcism 2, where it just suddenly <laughs> stopped being found footage. But uh, there's a... Uh, there's this one glaring thing that really threw me, was that <clears throat> at the beginning of the trailer, like, you hear, like, the movie guy voice going, you know, like, mention, like, like, last year, this man screamed like a, and then cuts off because they don't want to say bitch, and they say, like, ah, screaming, and then it, uh, it cuts to, like, footage from the first film, where it's like, honey, where are you going? I'm getting out of here, bitch. That's true. It's like, so you don't have a problem with him saying bitch in the trailer. You just can't. Maybe the voiceover guy refused to say it. <laughs> I am taking a moral high ground on this. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe he's like a like really like down to earth, like heavy, uh, heavy, like right wing values kind of dude. <laughs> I like to think that that's how he gets his chest. It's like, I'll do any movie you want, but I'm not going to work blue this summer. You'll laugh your <laughs> off. Yeah. That, that's, my, that's how I envision that dude. Because it makes me smile inside. And God damn it. After all the shit we've been through this year, I deserve a smile inside. That's why I'm going to keep saying Cunty McMom face until we get out of the car. <laughs> Take that smile and you hide it inside, Dave. You hide it. Brad will see it. And he'll think you're happy. And he will send you to something worse. Oh, no. I don't even know what, but it'll happen. No, that fucker's a heavy sleeper. If it gets any worse than this, bad things are going to fucking happen. Oops, you're on fire, bitch. <laughs> that was the brakes. Yeah, he doesn't know how to change the batteries in the uh, the smoke detectors. I do. <laughs> you, you take them out and you put in new ones. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> also, AMC has... We're just turning into, like, complaining old guys now. <laughs> kids were on my lawn today. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The, the broom just doesn't work anymore. I'm going to have to step it up to the fucking 22. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shoot, Logical progression. Shoot, well, you know, shoot to wound. I'm not going to try and kill him. I mean, a 22, unless you hit him, like, right in the fucking eye or, you know, directly between a rib, that thing ain't going to kill you. It's just going to lodge in a couple It'll inches. Bounce around a little. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, AC <coughs> had this weird little uh, turn off your cell phone thing that it ran before it. That was ah, yes, yes. remarkably racist. Sir, and, and sir really, and I talked about this last week. It's racist, I'm telling you. And I don't know why suddenly there's a bear in it, or why it's oddly silent. Like, there's no fucking sound during the entire thing. It was, it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable to sit through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like I said, highly racist. It's pretty spectacular. But I have to wonder. Hmm. <laughs> you got my interest <laughs> peaked. And <laughs> Tim's like, hmm. Hmm. I have a thought, Dave. Hmm. Okay, so you guys saw this in front of Black Nativity. Yes. And then we saw it tonight in front yes. of this. I wonder if that same thing ran in front of The Hobbit, which is a movie that does not feature black people. Brad said that it ran with the... <laughs> <coughs> something he saw a couple weeks ago too. Well, shit. That's that was my one thought. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Because wouldn't that be glorious? It's like there's one in front of the Hobbit, but it is incredibly white. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Could you please turn off your cell phone? Oh well, yes, yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Silence end. your cell phone. <laughs> Bear just kind of walks by, and they go, Shoo! I still don't even understand. What the fuck is with the bear? 
I realize this part makes no sense unless you've seen it in... We've described it in detail. It's okay. Yeah, and it's it's it's. it's yeah. I don't know why it was a bear. Letty, any last words? Well, she's dead. I think she might have muttered "Cunty McMom face" before she died. <laughs> You're awake. <laughs> All right, it's fucking late. I really want to smoke this. I'm going to drink in a few hours. Scotch until I die.